In this lesson, we're going to focus on finding the limit of multivariable functions, if it exists. If it doesn't, we need to show that it doesn't exist. So let's start with this problem. What do you think we need to do here? The first thing you should check is if you could substitute directly. In this case, we can. Replace an x with 1 and y with 2. We're going to get this. 1 to the third is 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 squared is 4 times 2. That's 8. So this is going to be 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. So for this problem, we could use direct substitution. So what about this problem? The limit as x and y approaches 5 and 5 of x squared minus y squared over x minus y. What do we need to do in order to evaluate this limit? Well, if we try to use direct substitution, we could see that this is going to be 0 over 0. So it's indeterminate, which means we can't do this right now. Now, what we could do is we could try to factor the numerator because it's a difference of perfect squares. x squared minus y squared, that could be factored into x plus y times x minus y. So at this point, we can cancel one of the factors. So we're left with the limit as x and y approaches 5 and 5 of x plus y. So now at this point, we can use direct substitution. So it's going to be 5 plus 5, which is 10. So that's the answer for this example. Now let's move on to our next example. So we have the limit as x and y are approaching the origin of the expression x squared over x squared plus y squared. What should we do in this example? Well, we could try direct substitution. This will be 0 squared over 0 squared, which is just indeterminate. So direct substitution will not work in this example. Now, we can't really factor this expression, nor can we multiply by a conjugate. So we need to see if maybe this limit doesn't exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to approach the origin from different directions and see if we can get a mismatch in our answers. Because if we approach from one direction and get an answer, and if that answer is different as we approach another direction, then the limit doesn't exist. So in a 2D system, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. Let's begin by approaching the origin along the x-axis. So along the x-axis, y is 0. So what we're going to do is substitute y for 0 in that expression. So thus we have the limit as x approaches 0. And this is going to be x squared over x squared plus 0 squared, which just x squared plus 0 squared is simply x squared. So this becomes 1. Now let's save that answer. Let's approach the origin from the y-axis. And let's see what answer we get. So along the y-axis, x is always 0. Thus, this is going to be the limit as y approaches 0. And then we need to replace x with 0. So this is going to be 0 squared over 0 squared plus y squared. So we have the limit as y approaches 0 of 0 over y squared, which is 0. So notice that we have a mismatch. Because they're different, that tells us that the limit does not exist as we approach the origin. Go ahead and try this example. So if we try direct substitution, this is going to be 0 over 0, which will be indeterminate. So let's check to see if the limit does not exist like we did before. So let's begin by approaching the origin along the x-axis. So along the x-axis, we know that y is equal to 0. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0. And this is going to be, so we're going to replace y squared with 0 squared. And we're going to replace y to the 4th with 0 to the 4th. 
So we have the limit as x approaches 0. x squared times 0 squared is 0. So we have 0 over x to the fourth, which is 0. So now let's move on to the y-axis. So let's approach the origin, point zero zero, along the y-axis. In this case, x is going to be 0 along that axis. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches, or rather, as y approaches 0. And then replacing x with 0, we're going to have 0 squared, y squared, over 0 to the 4th plus y to the 4th. So this is the limit as y goes to 0. 0 squared times y squared is 0. So this whole thing is equal to 0. So because these two values are the same, doesn't mean that the limit exists. So we need to do more work. Let's try approaching the origin using the line y equals x. So we can replace x with y or y with x. Let's go ahead and replace y with x. So everything will be in terms of x. So we'll have the limit as x approaches 0, x squared times x squared over x to the fourth plus x to the fourth. Now, x squared times x squared is uh, x to the fourth. And then 1x to the fourth plus 1x to the fourth is 2x to the fourth. So we can cancel these. And notice that our answer is different. It's 1 half. There's a 1 right here. So because these two are different, that tells us that the limit does not exist as we approach the origin. Here's another one that you could try. So as always, let's begin with uh, direct substitution. By the way, for each of these problems, feel free to pause the video and try it. So y is 0, x is 0, and so we'll have this. This is going to be 0 over 1 times negative 1. So 0 over negative 1 is just 0. So it's always good just to make sure that you could use direct substitution, because sometimes you can, and that'll be it. So that's it for this problem. Here's another example problem that you could work on. Go ahead and take a minute to try it. So let's begin with direct substitution. So we have 2, x is 0, y is 0, and then 3 times 0 squared plus 0 to the fourth. So that's 0 over 0. That's indeterminate. So direct substitution won't work. So let's see if we can prove that the limit doesn't exist. Let's start with the x-axis, where y is 0. So we're going to have the limit as x goes to 0. And replacing y with 0, it's going to be 2x times 0 squared over 3x squared plus 0 to the fourth. So we have the limit as x goes to 0. 2x times 0 squared is 0. And this is going to be over 3x squared, which is 0. So now let's check the y-axis. As we approach the origin along the y-axis, x is always 0. So we're going to have the limit as this time as y approaches 0. And so it's going to be 2 times 0 times y squared over 3 times 0 squared plus y to the fourth. So this becomes 0 on top over y to the fourth, and that 2 is equal to 0. Now let's try the line y equals x. So we're going to replace y with x. So everything will be in terms of x. So we'll have the limit as x goes to 0. It's going to be 2x times x squared over 3x squared. And then replacing y with x, we're going to have x to the fourth. So this becomes 2x to the third power over 3x squared plus x to the fourth. Now. Let's factor. So in the numerator, we can take out an x squared. So we're going to have 2x 
on the bottom, we could take out x squared as well. So we're going to have 3 plus x squared. So we can cross out x squared, and then we could do a direct substitution. So it's 2 times 0 over 3 plus 0 squared. So this is 0 over 3, which is 0. So notice that we haven't done anything yet because everything equals 0. So we're going to have to do something new here. First, let's clear the board. And let's summarize what we've done so far. So as we approach the origin from the x-axis, we got 0 as an answer. As we approach it from the y-axis, we also got 0. And as we approach this from the line y equals x, we also got 0. Now, there are other polynomials, or other expressions rather, that we could use that can still, that includes the point zero, 0, One of them is making y squared equal to x. The graph looks like this. So we could use that curve to approach the origin. And the reason why we want to use this is because if we replace y squared with x, all of the x variables that remain will have the same exponents. And that's what we want to do in this problem. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches 0. Now keep in mind, if y squared is equal to x, y to the fourth is x squared, if we square both sides. So let's replace y squared with x, and then let's replace y to the fourth with x squared. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 0. 2x times x is 2x squared. Here we have 3x squared plus 1x squared, that's 4x squared. So x squared cancels. This becomes 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2. So approaching it using this curve gives us a different value than all of the other ones. So anytime you approach a limit or approach a point using a limit from two different directions, and if it gives you two different values, the limit does not exist. In order for the limit to exist, as we approach the origin from any direction, it has to be the same. If it's different in one direction, the limit doesn't exist. Now let's move on to the next example problem. Go ahead and try it. So let's begin with direct substitution. Let's see what's going to happen. So this is going to be 0 over the square root of 4 minus 2. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So this is indeterminate. So the direct substitution is not going to work. But notice that we have a radical here. Whenever you see that, it's a good indication that you need to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. So let's do that. Let's multiply the denominator and the numerator by x squared plus y squared plus 4, and then change the sign from negative to positive 2. So what we're going to have is the limit as x and y approaches the origin. And then on the top, we're going to have x squared plus y squared times the conjugate. It's a lot of writing. Divided by. Now let's focus on the bottom part. When we multiply these two radicals together, the radical will disappear. And we're going to get x squared plus y squared plus 4. Now, when we multiply this radical by positive 2, that's going to cancel with negative 2 and this radical. So the two middle terms will cancel. And then when we multiply negative 2 times positive 2, that's going to give us negative 4. So we can see that 4 and negative 4 will cancel, leaving us with x squared plus y squared. And then x squared plus y squared will cancel. So now what we have left over is the limit as x and y approaches the origin and then this is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus 4 plus 2.
So now at this point, we can use direct substitution. So this is going to simplify to the square root of 4 plus 2. And so that's 2 plus 2, which gives us a final answer of 4. So that's it for this problem. Now let's move on to our last problem. Here we need to evaluate a limit that has an expression with three variables, x, y, and z. If we try to use direct substitution, we can see that it's going to be indeterminate, 0 over 0. So let's try to prove that this limit doesn't exist. So let's approach the origin from the x-axis. If we do so, that means that y is 0, but also z is 0. So we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0. Replacing y with 0, we have this. And then replacing zero, I mean z with 0, it's going to be 3x times 0 squared. And then... 2y squared is 0, z to the 4th will be 0 as well. So we have the limit as x approaches 0, and that's going to be 0 over x squared, which is 0. So let's just write this to keep track of what we did. So as we approach the origin from the x-axis, we got 0. If we try to approach it from, let's say, the y-axis or even a z-axis, chances are it's going to give us 0 again. And approaching it from the line y equals x is not going to work because we have three different variables. In a situation like this, when you have three different variables, you want to use parametric curves. That is, you want to introduce the t-parameter. Now, we need to do it in such a way that all of the exponents will be the same. So let's focus on x squared. If we made x squared equal to t squared, that would mean x is t. So this would be t squared, which means everything else, we want that to be t squared as well. So y squared, we want to make that t squared, which means y is t. Now z to the fourth, we also want to make that t squared, which means z is equal to I mean, z squared is equal to t. So now let's take the limit as x approaches, or rather, as t approaches 0, because as x, y, and z approach 0, t will approach 0. So this is going to be the limit as t goes to 0. Now let's replace y squared with t squared. And then we're going to replace x with t. So that's going to be 3t, and then z squared is equal to t, so times t. And we can see that x squared, that's t squared, plus 2y squared, y squared is t squared, and z to the fourth is t squared. So this is 3t squared plus 1t squared, that makes 4t squared. And let's see, this is 1t squared plus 2t squared plus 1t squared, so that makes 4t squared as well. t squared cancels, this becomes 4 over 4, which is 1. So the fact that it's different than 0 means that the limit does not exist.